Hey Smart Drivers, Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about situational awareness, where you are on the roadway, what is around you, uh, other road users, other fixed objects and those types of things, and when do you have to pay the most amount of attention to those other details. Stick around, we'll be right back with that information. Hi there Smart Drivers, welcome back. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about situational awareness to both pass a driver's test, be a smarter driver, and keep yourself safe on the roadway. So that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. And I know a little bit about this in terms of highway driving. I've had a couple of requests from Smart Drivers in the last week or so talking about or requesting about more information about driving on highways, how to keep yourself safe. And I just came back from a trip to Vancouver Island on the weekend it's five hours down to the ferry and an hour 40 across to the ferry and then on Vancouver Island uh, which is one of the Gulf Islands here uh, in on the west coast of Canada uh, in the United States on the west coast of Washington State they're called the San Juan Islands and it's basically you know one's in the north and one's in the south so uh, you know the same uh, islands and whatnot so Margaret's here Katie's here hello and anybody else l lurking in the background <laughs> hi there everyone hi there smart drivers so we're gonna talk about that tonight we're gonna talk about situational awareness it's a little bit directed at uh, driving instructors and uh, at mentors about what you should be looking for when you're first out with new drivers and teaching them how to drive and helping them to prepare and pass a driver's test also to keep safe and uh, we're going to talk about that. So basically what I do here is uh, the first 20 minutes, a uh, little presentation on situational awareness about keeping yourself safe and whatnot. And, you know, I was kind of thinking about this today as I was, you know, getting ready to do this. And, you know, it's about transitions. <laughs> Everything is about transitions. Martial arts is about transitions. Sports is about transitions. Driving is about transitions. And if you can master the transitions, that's where you're going to keep yourself out of safe and uh, keep yourself safe. And one of the things that you need to really do, especially on the highway, is you need to manage space around your vehicle. And I come back to this again and again in all of the videos. You can manage the space in front of your vehicle always, always, always. And if somebody moves into that space in front of you, you simply back off. You get your two to three second following distance back again. And you just continue to maintain that all the time. And know that space management is always going to be before speed management right if there's a car in front of you you're in a 50 mile an hour zone uh and that vehicle is insisting on doing 30 miles an hour you can't go any faster than 30 miles an hour until you get around that vehicle so that's what you got to do uh in terms of situational awareness mike is here uh <laughs> not sure what you're saying there Kelowna was freely but but uh, did it. Okay, I think you passed your driver's test, Mike. Is that right? I uh, went down south and drove through. Okay, excellent. Uh, traveling photographers here. Al is here. Hello, 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 everyone. So, okay, so we're going to... Where's my slideshow? There's my slideshow. All right, so we're going to go over to the presentation. We'll come back. We'll answer questions after the presentation uh, about anybody who's got a driver's test, uh, COVID-19, shortened driver's test. Uh, whether it's a closed circuit test or whatnot will help you with all of that. So here we get going. So situational awareness and you can see in the two images on the title slide here that one is in the country. Uh, you can see that it's yellow line so it's probably in North America. Two lanes going in opposite directions. The vehicles on the right can pass. The ones on the left uh, pass with caution. Solid yellow lines and then down in the city. And uh, apparent, obviously in the city there's going to be a lot more going on. Uh, for those of you who are new to Smart Drive Test, uh, my name is Rick. Uh, I was a truck driver through most of the 1990s. Uh, while I was going to university in Australia between 2002 and 2006, I was uh, drove bus for Greyhound there. Australians are fond of saying that uh, <laughs> they founded Greyhound. I, I never actually verified that fact, but that's what they like to say. And uh, I got a doctorate in legal history in the university from the University of Melbourne which is the study of policing, courts, and prisons. And my expertise is in uh, policing as it relates to traffic. So I've been around this traffic thing for quite a while now. And I became a licensed commercial driving instructor in 1997 as well. I worked with 
uh, people who had had debilitating injuries, lost a limb, brain injury, stroke, or those types of things. And uh, I helped them to retrain and get back to driving after that sort of debilitating injury. So that's kind of me in a nutshell. Uh, new video this week, I put a new video up for very first lesson, the very first time that you're in the vehicle. So basically uh, showing you how to use an automatic transmission, how to adjust the steering wheel, how to adjust the seat, the head restraint, the seat belt, and how to get the vehicle moving, how to get the vehicle to stop. And Corey will put that up for you. Corey's here, Corey is Bricks for Wheels. And Corey is the moderator, does an awesome job of getting up uh, videos that I suggest that you should have a look at, especially if you're a brand new driver. Uh, if you're watching now on the live stream or you're watching on the replay, have a look at that if you're just getting going uh, with your first lessons in the vehicle for sure. All right, uh, so first lesson. And uh, <laughs> uh, I think I think we're doing something right here on YouTube because th that uh, thumbnail, uh, your very first time, the first time I put it up on YouTube, I had instead of an exclamation mark after time, I had dot, dot, dot. And YouTube pulled my thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> and so I didn't change anything on the thumbnail. I just took the dot, dot, dot out and put the exclamation mark in. And uh, so far, so good. YouTube hasn't pulled it down. <laughs> so that's basically uh, YouTube was thinking that I was being, you know, being suggestive. And I very much was being suggestive in my thumbnail. <laughs> there, was, there was no ruse there about what I was doing. All right. Uh, so one of the things I want to talk about in terms of situational awareness uh, you know, and in my experience of construction and working on houses and doing physical labor and those types of things, it's often the things that you don't think about that would that are innocuous that are going to hurt you. <laughs> you know, swimming, for example, many of us are around pools, you know, we we live in that kind of world now where there's public swimming pools, we go swimming at the beach, we go swimming at the river. Uh, what not and those types of things, but still 50 to 60 people a year in Canada drown and it's probably somewhere around 10 times that in the United States. Uh, and you know, so one of the things about experience is, is that it gives us the test first and then it gives us the lesson afterwards, which can be a little bit tough. And this is particularly true in driving and you know, I'll show you later here that I did a survey and a lot of people thought that it was experiential that young people, because they're at such a risk of being involved in a crash, that they don't have the experience of driving, which is very true. And it's the same thing with us in sort of life and those types of things. And you know, I do a lot of my own, like I change my own oil and those types of things and whatnot. And uh, you know, there's just certain things that I know that I'm aware of. <laughs> Uh, you know, and it's experience because I've got in there and rammed and jammed at things and you end up, you know, crushing a knuckle or, you know, taking the skin off down to the bone or whatnot. And it really hurts. Uh, kitchen cupboards, for example, we think we, we go walk around the kitchen and those types of things. We're down underneath the bottom cupboard, uh, you know, d digging something out. We forgot we left the cupboard open above us and we stand up and we jam the top of our head into the corner of the kitchen cupboard. It just, you know, it's not something you would ever think that would hurt you, but it, totally will just knock you right on your bum uh, when you do that if, if any of you have that unfortunate experience right so this is what we're talking about in terms of situational awareness what is around you and what could potentially hurt you okay what are the consequences when you're driving right barbecues right we don't think of barbecues as being dangerous we certainly don't think of barbecues uh, as blowing up in our backyard but this is this is something that Fire departments are called to all the time that people don't clean them out. They're full of grease and they catch on fire in our backyard and set the house on fire. So, you know, there's dangers lurking, right? So priorities when driving. When do we have to pay attention? Obviously, a lot of us are paying attention when we're in cities and in urban areas because there's a lot going on in those types of things, uh, especially when we're approaching an intersection or approaching traffic lights or those types of things. Uh, you know, but again, and... Uh, Corey, I'll put the video up for you that I did a couple of weeks ago on space management, which will really, really help you out to, to not only pass a driver's test, but also to keep yourself safe after you get your license is to manage that space well around your vehicle. And one of the things I can say to you about highway driving, you know, because obviously going down to the coast and going to Vancouver Island this weekend, it's all Trans Canada. It's all multi-lane highway down through Vancouver and whatnot. Uh, you know, you want to drive in the spaces between the clusters. You don't want to be in, for whatever reason, people feel uh, inclined to drive in groups. You don't want to be driving in those groups because now you've given up 
your space. You've given up your buffer of safety, so you don't want to be in there. Okay. Uh, what is on the road? What's on the road around you? Uh, and can you allow your focus to wane? Can you be playing with the radio and adjusting the radio or those types of things? Can you be, you know, having a glance at the GPS that you're trying to figure out where you're going and whatnot? You know, if you're on a straight stretch of road as this image here and there's no vehicles behind you, there's no vehicles in front of you, then yes, potentially you could allow your focus to wane for a little bit, right? 15 or 20 seconds. Whereas if there's a vehicle tailgating you, you certainly don't want your attention waning because, you know, they may be passing or there's a vehicle approaching or whatnot. So you need to decide, you know, and this comes with experience about when you can allow your attention to wane on the road and when you can't. All right. The other thing in this, again, as I said at the in the beginning with the introduction is this is a little bit directed towards driving instructors and mentors and those helping out new drivers learning how to drive and get their license and whatnot. Uh, you know, is it a first license? Is it a CDL student? Are they learning how to drive trucks and trailers? Are you becoming a driving instructor? Uh, it, for those of you who want to become a driving instructor, uh, let me tell you, it's, it's, it's a, a challenging task. You kind of go into it thinking, oh, you know, how much is there to learn about driving? And there is a great deal for a driving instructor to learn. There's all the theory and knowledge about all the traffic laws and those types of things. And then you have to learn a new way to drive for students to be able to pass a driver's test. You have to memorize all the sequencing for doing the slow speed maneuvers. Uh, and you know you have to retrain your body how to uh, handle the controls of the vehicle and whatnot. And it can be a bit overwhelming for some students. And I can, I've taught these courses before and it's, it's kind of interesting after a couple of weeks of doing this because it's a three week course. By the end of two weeks, they're pretty tired. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what is the purpose for learning to drive and get a driver's license? Are you are you preparing to pass a driver's test or do you want to learn safer and be a smarter driver? Okay, so think about all of that as well. Uh, rear end crashes on the highway, okay? Uh, you definitely don't want to be rear-ended on the highway, especially at high rates of speed because as I've talked about before, cars are not designed to protect us in a rear end collision. They're designed in a, in a front end impact is what they're designed to do so it could be you know a, a long recovery period for you if you're involved in a rear end crash okay so assessment for learning so this is really at, directed at mentors and, and at driving instructors if you're out for your first lesson one of the things you want to figure out is you want to figure out okay do i have a nervous nelly or a confident carl or do i have somebody kind of in the middle of the of the curve there and you need to figure out how much can the student take on and this was one of the things that we were always doing with cdl drivers uh, when we took them out for the first day and we had them in the vehicle, you know, and unfortunately a lot of driving schools that are teaching truck driving, they just take the student out in the truck and they drive around in the truck. And, you know, I really th think that's a disservice to the student. I think on day one, the student should be in the truck with the trailer on the back of the truck and a load. And that student should be figuring out how to drive that truck and trailer. It's, and there's a, there's a, psychological there's a, a cognitive term for it i think it's called m mind mapping it's kind of like when we go into a new house and we're trying to figure out where all the electrical uh where all the light switches are in the house it's the same thing with learning any kind of task you don't want to be starting at the bottom and then adding pieces to it i mean sometimes it's going to work but when it comes to something that you have such a short amount of time to master a skill such as truck driving you want to be on from day one figuring out what that trailer is going to be doing and what you need to do to be able to handle that trailer uh, successfully. Okay, so mentors and students, how much can you take and how much can you as the, as the student take? You need to, you know, have some measure of control over that as well and have some understanding of what the curriculum and what is demanded of you and whatnot and your learning experience is going to be much better. Okay, so the driving task, I've talked about this before, the driver, the vehicle, traffic, road, light, and weather, all of this is constantly changing. It was like yesterday I came back in the afternoon uh, from the West Coast and, you know, by the time I got back, I was two hours from home, it was dark and, you know, I mean, it was fairly clear and fairly straight going forward, but as one smart driver said a couple of years ago here on the channel, <laughs> driving at night is like driving on a different planet. It very much is. Uh, and you need to switch how you're driving. You need to be looking for different landmarks along the roadways, very much paying attention to road markings and those types of things. And uh, coming down Highway 97C from Kamloops into Vernon, it's a two-lane skinny, 
and you know, I'm looking at the road markings, figuring out whether I can pass the car in front of me and I get the dotted line. And then just as I get up behind the vehicle to, in preparation to pass, the, the road markings go to double solid and I'm like, ah, oh, I can't pass. So these are the other things, you know, in terms of situational awareness and in terms of, you know, the light, is your light changing on you and do you have to pay attention to that as well? So that's something else in terms of your situational awareness uh, that you're gonna pay attention to when you're driving. So where are you in traffic? Are you driving on a highway? Are you trying to pass? Uh, still learning to determine gap and you're uh, turning left at a complex intersection. So one of the things that I was trying to determine last night uh, in terms of, you know, did I have enough gap to be able to get out and pass this truck and trailer because it was a truck, a pickup truck pulling a recreational uh, trailer. And you know, <laughs> they're driving 80 kilometers an hour on a road where the average, uh, you know, the traffic flow is 110 kilometers an hour, which is, you know, they're, they're driving 50 miles an hour and it's usually 65, 68 miles an hour that most people are traveling along that one, uh, that road. So, okay. All right. You don't get to say negative comments. Corey, you can take care of that for me if you wouldn't mind. Uh, so, Different environments are gonna require different levels of situational awareness, so know that, okay? Uh, that uh, depending on where you are, sometimes you're gonna be like super on, okay? All right, uh, okay. There we go, okay, so what are the risks? Observation, communication, space management, speed management, those are to stay safe, and those uh, are both for passing a driver's test and staying safe on the roadway. All right. Just bear with me one sec. Okay, so observation, communication, space management, speed management, those are not in order. Space management should be first, okay? So it, when you're driving and you wanna drive more safely, you wanna keep yourself safe, then uh, manage space first, okay? Ebb and flow of driving lessons, what is expected of you, situational awareness, and teaching moments, okay? And uh, so teaching moments are when something happens along the roadway and you need to give some feedback to the students and those types of things. So as a mentor, as a driving instructor, you can take those moments. Uh, for example, I was looking at some uh, stock footage that I have here, recording stuff while I've been walking around and, and uh, as well on uh, my dash cam. <laughs> and you know, when an emergency vehicle approaches at an intersection, for example, that most of the traffic stays stopped. And it was actually interesting, the uh, ambulance came down to the intersection, saw that the intersection was blocked by traffic at the intersection and used the slip lane to go around the stop traffic at the intersection and then proceeded through the intersection. So again, this is part of the situational awareness, figuring out where the emergency vehicle is, figuring out where you are on the roadway, and then figuring out what you need to do to, to give the right of way to the emergency vehicles that are trying to proceed through the intersection. All right, and then of course, Winter driving, a uh, whole new uh, you know type of driving for so many people. And the other thing about winter driving is that uh, you know most of the people who you know they they self-regulate themselves. They stay home if they don't have a great deal of ability to drive. And you know this actually <laughs> July and August these are the two uh, months of the year where we have the most number of traffic crashes so know that as well okay so you know it's imperative that you manage space well okay experiential where to focus uh this is a study that i did uh about a year ago with young drivers what is the reason that people believe that young drivers had crashed most people believe that it was experiential i also believe that it has uh, you know there's there's some responsibility to be taken by the part of the you know the way that we deliver driver education it just doesn't have enough uh you know it's not a high priority within our society i think there needs to be more of a priority for young people and i think that it's never monocausal it's not the fact that they don't have experience right it's also the fact that they're dealing with the four d's in society i've talked about these previously drinking driving dating and distracted driving are just distractions period on t in terms of electronics and in terms of telematics in the car and whatnot uh, communication and observe, observation. There's so many things on the roadway that can be completely innocuous in one situation, like completely harmless in one situation. In another situation, you're gonna end up in a crash. Nine times out of 10, it's gonna be fine. And the one time out of 10, you're gonna get yourself into a crash, okay? All right, so good luck on your road test. And remember, pick, a, pick the best answer.
not necessarily the right answer. And so now we'll answer questions and those types of things. All right. So, uh, Omar or Arden. Yes, Arden, you passed your class five test two days ago. That's awesome. Congratulations. So that was on Saturday. So class five, where did you pass your class five on Saturday? Was that in Alberta? Were they doing tests in Alberta two days ago? Uh, Margaret, yes. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, Jonathan, my friend. Hello, everyone. I'm finally here. Rick, my CDL Class A training is going great. Uh, learning to upshift and downshift is fun. I know how to downshift smoothly when and where. I uh, got my Class A road test in, on September 4th. Awesome. So a couple of weeks away, not too far. Uh, after practicing on a stick shift tractor trailer, I finally understood why it's more fun to, to drive a stick shift than an automatic. Uh, it's more fun and being in more control. Hearing those revs feels awesome. Okay, awesome. Robin, how are you, my friend? Okay. Adam, hello. Compliments tonight. Everybody thinks I'm good looking. I don't know, it must be that I got back working out now that my back's fixed. <laughs> oh, it's so wonderful. I can go back to jujitsu again. Uh, Mike, I have my L and I am blind in one eye. Went down south for holidays, drove through Kelowna for the first time, had to pull over for an ambulance. Uh, was a bit freaky, but made it through and on to Vernon. Awesome. Okay. Uh, Alfonso Channel, you want uh, parallel parking? Is that what you're looking for? If you are, Corey will get that for you. Uh, Margaret, is it a good idea for me to take driving lessons at night and in the winter when there's snow so I can learn? Uh, Margaret, you don't need to. What we need to do right now, Margaret, the best thing for you to focus on is just getting your license at this juncture. Once you get your license, then we can focus on all that other stuff for you. We can focus on the night driving. We can focus on driving in inclement weather, driving in the wintertime and those types of things. So really, uh, just right now, just focus on getting the license. We can help you out with all that other stuff after you get your license because the license is going to take a lot of your focus and a lot of your concentration. So all that other stuff, uh, let's work on that after you get your, get your license, okay, for sure. All right, uh, Mike, your video has helped me so much. Thank you. You are most welcome, my friend. Okay, so one of the, the oh, okay, Gordon's here as well. Uh, driving on a highway at night is quite intimidating. I know one guy who had to stop on a highway because there was a complete blackout. The problem is that when he couldn't see uh, other cars coming on coming. Yes, and, and that can certainly happen, Gordon, that it's difficult to see at night. One of the things you want to do especially if you're being blinded by oncoming traffic, there's a couple of things you can do. First, uh, flick the button on the bottom of the mirror for reflective lights behind you. Uh, the other thing you wanna do is look down at the fog line and use the fog line because what happens at night is we get night vision because as the light did, you know, gets darker and darker and there's less light is what I was trying to say, our pupils dilate and get bigger and we are, you know, we're trying to, be able to see at night so you need to protect that because what happens is if you get the glare of other headlights shining into your eyes your pupils will go back to normal right and you'll lose your night vision so you want to try and protect your night vision so the other couple of things that you can do at night so the first thing you want to do is you want to try and reduce glare of other lights as much as possible you don't want to be looking into the lights of oncoming traffic uh, especially if they have their bright lights on and, and they forget to dim them or they got some of those crazy blue laser lights that <laughs> doesn't matter whether they're on low beam or whether they're on high beam they completely blind you at night uh, you need to be looking down at that fog line and uh, you know just looking away from the light so that it's not projecting into your eyes so that you can protect your night vision uh, the other thing you want to do is you want to try and turn down your dash lights. There's usually a dial on the left of the dash panel there somewhere where you can turn down the dash lights. Turn them down as low as you can tolerate them. I know that some people need to have them up so they can see the speedometer and those types of things. But if you're on the highway at night and you've got the vehicle on cruise control, uh, you're not going to have to worry about your speed. Uh, you know, there's other lights and sensors on the vehicle as well. Uh, so you can just turn the dash lights down as low as you can uh, tolerate them. I mean, when I used to drive big truck, uh, you know, and I was driving at night and I had the truck on cruise, I just turned the dash lights right off. Because what happens when you're driving is, is that you have this big lit up instrument panel down here and you're trying to look out into the darkness to see if you can see other road users and 
you know, fixed objects and those types of things and figure out where the roadway is going at night. And what happens is that the light is drawing your, your vision down to the instrument panel, which is not where you want it to be. You want your vision up, right? So uh, that's what you need to do. And if you can turn the dash lights down, it's really going to help you out with that. And, you know, and again, use uh, cruise control so that you don't, you know, your, your speed is not waning up and down and those types of things. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, Katie, uh, I took the driving lesson and the instructor wasn't very good, but I did figure out how to do the maneuverability. Uh, his technique didn't help, but once I get my car, I register, I'm going to do schedule. Okay. Yeah. And Katie, if, if you don't, if you're not working with the, if the driving instructor is not working with you or, or working for you, or you're not just jiving, go and get another driving instructor, especially if, if you have some time before your driving test. Uh, you know, just don't, don't, uh, don't waste your time with the driving instructor that's not working out for you, okay? Uh, Denise, I have to pick up my five-hour pre-licensing certificate tomorrow. That's awesome. Okay, Alfonso, I was just uh, thanking you for helping me pass my driving exam last February. The parallel parking video was the most useful one. Awesome. Really glad that we could help out with that. And what we're doing, uh, Alfonso, is we're redoing a lot of the older videos on the channel. I'm trying to figure those out and make a list of those and get the older videos done. So uh, there we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the other thing that I wanted to talk about on the two-lane skinny that I was coming down from Kamloops to back down to Vernon is, is that there's quite enough. There's at least ten different places along the roadway in an hour and a half drive where it goes, there's a passing lane. You come up to the roadway and there's a passing lane, you can get out around the other traffic. Uh, which can be a little bit frustrating at times because I came in down through and there was no traffic all the way to Falkland. And I get into Falkland, Falkland's about 30 miles north of Vernon here. And on just as you come out of Falkland, there's a passing lane on the other side of town. And there's, there's a big truck there. I can see the big truck. And I'm just like, yeah, we don't want to be following the big truck in back to Vernon because they're going to be going slow because they were obviously loaded. And there's four or five cars behind the big truck. <laughs> and not one of them got out into the passing lane and got on it and, you know, throttled up and, and passed the goofy truck. Except the one vehicle that did get in front of me just to block me. So if you're going to get out in the passing lane, don't dawdle in the passing lane. Get going, right? And, you know, and then we kind of went on a little bit farther uh, as we're going down the road. And there's another passing lane. So finally, I get out in the passing lane and I'm just, I'm jacking on it. Because I've, <laughs> I've been on the road for five hours at this time. I just wanted to go home. And so there's a pickup truck following me. And I can see the pickup truck. And the pickup truck's kind of following me a little bit. You know, he's kind of tailgating me a little bit. So I get up to the end where it's going to go back into one lane. And the pickup truck's like right in my back corner. And I thought, well, he wants to pass. So I get up to the transition. And this is what I was talking to you before about situational awareness and transitions. So the transition is that the, the, the two lanes goes back to one lane. So you've, all this traffic has to move into one lane. And the... You know, and situational awareness. What is what is this person in the pickup truck doing sitting off my back corner? I'm thinking, okay, they want to pass. So I'm like, okay, you can take the lead. And so I get near the end of the inside lane and I let off the throttle. What does the pickup truck do? The driver of the pickup truck lets off the throttle too. And I'm like, oh my God. You know what had happened? <laughs> the reason the pickup truck let off the throttle is because... The, the driver wanted me to go first because he thought you're gonna you're gonna be the bear buster. <laughs> In other words, if you if we get stopped, we get pulled over because we're speeding. Uh, you're the one that's gonna get the speeding ticket, not me. At least that's what he that's I'm pretty sure that's what he was thinking. That's why he let go, he let me go first and didn't let me get out in front of him. And uh, you know when I let off the throttle, let him go. But you know, again, it's situational awareness. And that is something that's very experiential. That's something that, you know, it's going to take a while for you to kind of recognize and figure out what's going on. But in terms of situational awareness, it's always going to be those transitions that are going to give you grief. 
when you have two lanes going back to one lane, when you're going through an intersection, when you're using a slip lane, when you're trying to turn left, uh, you know, when you're trying to change lanes, those transitions in your driving are always what's going to cause you the most amount of grief when you're learning how to drive or when you're learning how to stay safe and be a smarter driver and those types of things. So pay attention to the transitions. If you can pay attention to the transitions and know when the transitions are coming, that's going to make you safer on the roadway. Okay. Um, I'm not, uh, so Katie said, yeah, I'm not uh, scheduling another lesson with that instructor. Yeah, probably the best thing to do, Katie, for sure. Uh, Gordon, speaking of driving in the dark, I am reminded of the 2009 James Bond uh, film where uh, Bond gets captured because he crashed when reacting in the dark to the tied up Danzel. <laughs> yes. And Gordon, I think that was also the stunt that set a world record for the number of rolls in a car. It was really kind of unfortunate because I, I believe that was a Maserati that he rolled. Uh, I think it was 12 or 15 times. It was just crazy. Uh, Margaret, all parking in New York City is parallel parking. Studying the video a lot. Awesome. Uh, Gordon, guard like a blind turn. Yes. Uh, Mike, what speed would you be at turning onto a street from the highway? Uh, Mike, you know, speeds are pretty consistent when it comes to turning a motor vehicle. So left turns, depending on what kind of a, how much, how big the turn is from one place to another, you're going to be doing anywhere from uh, 15 miles an hour to 30 miles an hour, which is kind of, you know, 20 kilometers an hour to 35 kilometers an hour, depending on how big the intersection is. Uh, right turns are a little bit different. They're going to be kind of 8 to 12 miles an hour or kind of 10 to 15 kilometers an hour, uh, depending on the intersection. But, you know, they're fairly consistent. So the other thing, uh, and this that's a good point that you make there, Mike, in terms of turns and turning on the highway, is that you need to, you know, if you've been traveling for a long period of time at a high rate of speed, like I was last night, you know, driving the speed limit on the Trans-Canada Highway is 120 kilometers an hour, which is uh, just about 70 miles an hour, 75 miles an hour. Uh, I've been traveling for four or five hours at that rate of speed. So when you you have to look at your inst instrument panel and rely on your instrument panel to get your speed down, particularly if you're going to get taken off ramp off the highway, uh, you really need to look at your instrument panel. You really need to get your speed down, particularly uh, for tractor trailer drivers, CDL drivers, bus and truck drivers, those types of things. Uh, you're driving a larger vehicle uh, because, or you're pulling a trailer, especially if you're pulling a trailer, you really want to get your speed down uh, because you want to be pulling that trailer through cur uh, curves, corners, and turns. You don't want to let that trailer push you at all uh, when you're going through the turns and those types of things. And it's the same thing with buses or with trucks or those types of things. So you really, uh, you know, it's called velocitization. You kind of get used to the higher rate of speed and you can't get the vehicle speed down. And if you don't and you try to make a turn or move through a transition, then that's when you're going to get into trouble. Uh, Gil, in your experience, how many hours behind the wheel a CDL driver class A student must have before skills and road test? Uh, suggestions for getting used to the trailer size on turns. Uh, Gil, it really, it, it really depends on the student, but in my experience, uh, in my professional opinion, I think that most students to take a, a class one, a class A CDL driver's license and be ready for the test competently, they need somewhere between 30 and 50 hours of actual seat time, of actually being in the seat and driving the vehicle. You know, there are so many courses. We used to have a 28 hour course at the truck driving school that guys could come in and take. And this was very much for guys that were self-funding. They didn't have funding. And it was a $4,000 course. It was 28 hours. Well, the time you put in pre-trip inspection, hook and unhook, uh, air brakes, uh, you know, when, by the time you put those things in uh, and learning how to back up, the, the student really only got about 12 or 15 hours of actual seat time before they went for a driver's test. And 15 hours of seat time in a tractor trailer unit is just not enough uh, seat time to learn efficiently how and safely how to drive a tractor trailer unit. I really think that it needs to be kind of 30 to 50 hours minimum. And, you know, we, we are now seeing the MELT, the mandatory entry level trainings, which has been brought into Ontario and other provinces here in Canada. They're entertaining it in the United States. Uh, it's 112 or 115 hours of mandatory entry level training. The problem is, is that 
most of that time is in the classroom. I think 35 or 40 hours of it is in the classroom. Another 25 or 30 hours of it is, is in the yard. And so again, we're still back to the kind of 35 or 40 hours of actual seat time. And I know that they're trimming that off as well because then you have to have a driving instructor with the student in the truck driving around and that just doesn't happen. So they're still not getting the seat time that they need to have uh, with these trucks. And the other problem with Ontario is uh, they're running around with empty trucks. They're not loaded. Uh, they need to have loaded trucks to train these guys because an empty truck is very different than a loaded truck. So, you know, they're doing a disservice to those new drivers who are coming into the industry. Okay. Uh, Rakan, you have your driver's test this week. Good luck on your driver's test. Uh, be sure to drop back and let us know how it goes. Uh, Gordon, I thought that scene was clever, but I don't think Bond would have been fit to capture because he would have been likely been dead. I am surprised Bond wouldn't have put on high beams. Uh, yeah, Gordon, good point. Good point. Yeah, it's uh, not likely that you would have survived that without a five-point seatbelt harness and a helmet, because I'm sure that the stunt person was wearing. Or, uh, you know, even better, it was probably a, a, a remote-controlled vehicle that they had set up, and somebody was using remote controls, and they were driving the vehicle, and they when they pulled the stunt off. So, you know, it probably wasn't even anybody in the vehicle at the time that it happened, for sure. Okay. So again, so transition. So the other thing, again, just repeating what I said, because, you know, this highway driving stuff is fresh in my mind from the weekend of driving. Uh, you know, the other thing is, is that, and again, I want to come back to saying this again and again, for whatever reason, when vehicles are on the highway, they want to drive in clusters. They want to drive together in a group and you, you should, the, the hair on the back of your neck should bristle if you're in that group because I get in that group and I never feel comfortable when I'm in that group I always want to be in the spaces between the groups of vehicle you want to drive by yourself when it comes to driving on the highway you very much want to be the lone wolf you want to be by yourself uh, between the clusters of vehicles and that way it's going to keep you safe and allow you to have this huge buffer this smart buffer of space around you that's going to keep you out of trouble and give you lots of times to react. Because if you have that buffer of space around your vehicle, you can be looking far down the roadway and you can be figuring out what's going on with traffic patterns. And, you know, I was up on top of the Coquihalla coming down into Merritt last night. And, you know, I look over in the other lane and I'm not sure how this guy did it, but he had a set of Super Bs on, which for those of you who don't know, it's a tractor trailer with two trailers on the back of it. And it's three lanes going up the hill the mountain, obviously, and he's across, he's somehow jackknifed this thing and he's got the whole tractor trailer unit across two lanes of traffic. And I was like, how, how did he even do that? Right. And you know, he's out there at dusk, which is probably the most dangerous time of, of the evening. And he's standing next to his truck and I'm like, wow. I mean, he did have the four way flashes on, but I was like, you know, cars are humming up that hill and he's there just out in the middle of nowhere. So it was kind of weird. Pathfinder, <laughs> watching from work, <laughs> you are most welcome, my friend. Uh, Gordon, who the heck is legislating these entry-level programs? I am sure it isn't the trucking authorities. Uh, Gordon, it's not the trucking authorities. The problem with these uh, mandatory entry-level programs is they are so political. And the people, the bureaucrats that are involved, the ones making the decisions, you know, they have so many interests in so many people with their finger in the pie going oh this is what I want and this is what I want and you know there's so much pressure from the truck driving schools and so much pressure from the industry uh, you know that it it always ends up you know there's that old saying about no one person is as dumb as all of us and unfortunately that's kind of what happens when the bureaucrats get involved and it never is what is for the best interest of the people who are coming into the industry. The other problem with it is, is that we don't have the funding that should be there for new truck drivers because they're taking these huge long courses. Well, now you're looking at a ten dollars or $12,000 truck driving course. What person who's going in to take a truck driving course can afford ten dollars to $12,000 and six to, tw six to 12 weeks off work without pay 
to be able to take that course to get a truck driving license. It's just, you know, those kinds of questions are never answered in my mind. And, you know, these people, these, these courses just don't get taken because people can't afford them. All right. Uh, but I just wanted to say thank you for all your videos. I greatly appreciate them going for my G2 on Thursday. Good luck on your driver's test there, Bot, on Thursday. That's awesome. Uh, by the way, do examiners ever make you parallel parking between two car cars or is it just one? Uh, generally bought in Ontario, you know, 98% of the time, it's just behind one vehicle. They don't make you park between two vehicles. Now saying that there is a possibility. So I would practice that a couple of times just so you're not, uh, freaked out by that. Uh, the other thing bought, I don't know whether your vehicle has a backup camera. If you do have a backup camera, it's super easy to figure out how far something is behind you. I just, <laughs> I'm a huge advocate of backup cameras now. I think they really... Uh, take a lot of the guesswork out of learning how to drive a vehicle and especially learning how to do slow speed maneuvers and those types of things. So no, most of the time they are not going to make you park between two vehicles. Uh, every now and again, I do get a smart driver that says to me, uh, yes, uh, they, the driving examiner made me park between two vehicles, but for the most part, they don't make you do that. Okay. So I was... In the presentation, I said space management, speed management, observation, and communication. These are the four fundamental components of not only learning how to drive and passing a driver's test, but they're also the four fundamental components that are going to keep you safe, make you a smarter driver, and keep you crash-free after you get your driver's license. So space management, I've talked about this. Corey put the video up for you uh, in terms of... Uh, managing space in front of your vehicle and as i said you can always manage space in front of your vehicle always have that two to three second following distance under ideal conditions uh, if the conditions deteriorate or you're driving a larger vehicle then increase your following distance between behind other vehicles and again I come back to this you know people will always say oh well somebody's going to cut up, cut you off in front yeah somebody's going to move in front of you in that space and those types of things but again, because they're going faster than you, they're going to be gone very quickly and you just regain that space in front of your vehicle and keep yourself safe. Okay. And then the other three sides of the vehicle, the left side, the right side, and the rear of your vehicle, uh, newer vehicles have blind spot detectors. Again, another great technological aid. But you know, if you have these things on your vehicle, if you have blind spot detectors or you have backup cameras, make sure that you're still doing all of those other scanning checks that you need excuse me, to be, to be doing. You need to be doing your 360 degree scan before you're backing up. Uh, you need to be shoulder checking before you're moving, changing lanes and turning and those types of things. So the technology is great, but don't rely on it 100%. Make sure that you're doing all the other stuff that you need to be doing as well to keep yourself safe when you're driving. Okay, so uh, space management, speed management. So space management comes first and then sp speed management. Uh, for the purposes of a driver's test, uh, you want to get the vehicle up to the posted speed limit as quickly as possible. Don't go over the speed limit by, you know, more than a couple of miles an hour. And again, you've got that scanning pattern in place and you should be checking your instrument panel every 8 to 12 seconds. So you're coming back to your instrument panel far down the road in checking one of your wing mirrors far down the road, check your center mirror, and then just repeat that pattern every 8 to 12 seconds. And... As part of that, you're checking your speed, and because you're checking your speed every 8 to 12 seconds, you're going to be adjusting it and getting it, you know, as close to the posted speed limit as possible. Okay. Uh, JVL, finally got my CDL license. Amigo, your skill videos on downshifting really helped me a lot. That's awesome. Congratulations. Uh, you got a, a job lined up yet, JVL, that you're going to be working on? Uh, Margaret, in city street driving, how can you maintain that distance because people are crammed in together? At intersections and trying to cut you off again margaret you just take that space you just keep that two to three second distance don't get i know there's a lot of pressure and social driving has a lot of peer pressure i know that and you know it was a big this was this is part of the driving instructor transition is is knowing that you can manage that space around your vehicle you can maintain that space in front of your vehicle that you want to have that two to three second following distance and that when you're stopped in traffic, you're stopped so you can see the tires of the vehicle making clear contact with the pavement. You've got that one vehicle of space uh, in front of you in stopped traffic. And then in keeping with that, Margaret, uh, observation and communication, good observation, good communication. You know, you're driving down the road, you get your scanning pattern, you're doing your shoulder checks. 
uh, reversing your 360 degree scans, making sure you're looking out the back window, glancing at your backup camera and those types of things. So you've got all of that in place while you're driving. And again, it's both for passing a driver's test and keeping yourself safe on the roadways. Uh, Roa, thank you, Rick. My wife is going for a class five basic road test in Edmonton. Uh, she's a very, very big fan of yours and watched most of your videos. Thanks again for spreading so much of your knowledge. And you are most welcome. And that is awesome news about your wife going for her driver's test. Congratulations. I'm really happy to hear we can help out and, you know, get some more dr licensed drivers in the family there. Terrific. Uh, bought any tips on what I should do a day before the test? Yes, but one of the things you absolutely want to do, and Corey will put the video up for you on the day before the test, is you want to do a pre-trip inspection on your vehicle. Make sure you have the uh, both plates on it, front and back. The registration is up to date. The insurance is valid. Uh, make sure all the lights work. Make sure the windshield wipers work. Make sure that the air conditioning and the heat works. The seats are adjustable. The seat belts, both the passenger and the driver's uh, seat belt work. If there are any safety defects. Uh, I've had quite a number of drivers, smart drivers this summer who've been denied driver's tests uh, because, you know, for example, they had a brake light out and they showed up and they do their little mini pre-trip before they take you out. And... Uh, uh, you know, if you have a brake light out or you have a plate, a license plate missing, then you're going to be denied your driver's test and have to come back. So make sure that you do that drive, that pre-trip inspection. And again, for smart drivers watching now or watching on the replay, uh, make sure you do the pre-trip inspection. Even if it's a driving school car, you're going, you've hired a driving school and they're going to take you down. Uh, make sure that you say to the driving instructor, to him or her, did, did you do a pre-trip inspection on the vehicle? Do we know that it's safe and ready to go when we get down to the driving test center? Because you don't want to be denied your test on test day. So make sure you do that. And then, uh, but the other thing you can do for test day, uh, when you show up for your driver's test, if there aren't signs prohibiting it, then back into the space. That way, when you're going for your driver's test, you just drive out and you get going and you do your driver's test, okay? So the other thing, so we were talking about the four components of driving, space management, speed management, observation, communication. We talked about observation, good scanning patterns, backing up, 360 degree scans, shoulder checks, those types of things. And then finally, communication, the way that we communicate with other drivers. And I get, I get this a lot, especially from CDL drivers who are already licensed. You know, you're, you tell them to change lanes to the left and you can see them looking in the mirror and they're looking in the mirror and it's like, what are you doing? Uh, well, there's a car beside me and the car won't move. And I can't change lanes. Okay, did you ask the driver to move? What do you mean? Well, you know, if you put your signal on, <laughs> they might actually move. And then, you know, after I say that to them and I kind of chuckle a little bit, they put the signal on and sure enough, three signals, three flashes on the signals later, you see the car go peeling out beside the big truck and you know they can move over and I said you know and this is what I tell drivers all the time other drivers will not help you out other drivers will not move unless you ask and no not all the time they're not going to do it every time but 75 80 percent of the time if you put your signal on and ask other drivers to move or to back off a little bit or get up past you they will do it okay not all the time so you got to be careful and know uh you know from your situational awareness that you've got your signal on that no, in fact, they're not. It's the same thing with the guy last night at the end of the passing lane that was going back to one lane. And I'm thinking he's sitting right off my back corner and I'm thinking, okay, he wants to go past. Well, no, he didn't want to go past. He just wanted to sit in behind me, uh, you know, to follow me. And you know, that goofiness that happens. It's just part and parcel of it. Um, Yes, Gordon, that's excellent points about braking and accelerating smoothly. And, you know, got your foot on the floor, you're using the ball of your foot. You might have to keep your, uh, you know, keep your toes curled so that you get good control of the pedals and those types of things. Uh, Katie, I'm nervous around big trucks. Is that normal? Yes, Katie, that's totally normal uh, for being nervous around big trucks. You know, just don't hang around, just don't hang out near them, right? Uh, if you're driving behind them, make sure you've got your two to three second following distance. And if you do decide to pass uh, a tractor trailer unit, then just get up, you know, get some good speed and just expediently go past them as quickly as you can and then just pull in, in front of them. Uh, you know, 
it's not unusual. No, it's not a, a weird phobia that you have in terms of being around uh, big trucks and those types of things. They're huge. I mean, in relation to your car, big trucks are very, very big indeed. I mean, there in the United States, a uh, tandem, tandem truck and trailer is 80,000 pounds. Well, you're, the normal car weighs 4,000 pounds, okay? So let's just say that. So, you know, the big truck, if my math is right here, it's not always right on the fly, uh, you know, a big truck weighs 20 times what you do. <laughs> you're sitting in your little car, right? Your little Kia. <laughs> that's, a, that's a huge difference. That's, be, that's pretty intimidating, right? That's like going to martial arts and you're fighting the biggest guy in the classroom. <laughs> yeah, it can be intimidating, no doubt. Okay. Uh, Gordon, how do I get dirt out of the back sensor? Uh, Gordon, you should be able to just wash your vehicle and that should be able to get uh, the dirt out for you. Okay, Jasmine, I just passed my exam today. I was super nervous, but watching all your videos, it did make a huge difference. I'm so grateful. That's awesome, Jasmine. I'm so glad that we could help out and get you a license. That's great. Uh, and where did you go for your little celebration? Did you go and get some ice cream, go down to the park and have a walk with your best friend? Uh, make sure that you celebrate. I, you know, and I wanted to say this because you know, last week I had quite a number of smart drivers who passed their driver's test, and you know, I would say to them, "Oh, where did you go to celebrate?" And they'd be, "Oh, I drove to work. Oh, I did some errands. I uh, I went to the grocery store." It's not a celebration, people. That is not a celebration. <laughs> That's just you getting on with your life. It's just like, oh yeah. Climb to another mountain, you know, and the thing is, you're just going to get old and caustic and you're going to be like Archie Bunker, which many of you may not know who Archie Bunker is, but uh, Red Foreman, you know, booting your ass kind of thing. You're going to be that caustic, miserable old person just looking for the next mountain to climb. Take the time, celebrate your little wins, celebrate your successes because you're never going to get your driver's license again. I mean, I've, I've done at least 10 or 12 driver's tests because, you know, truck driver's license, bus license, instructor's license. And, you know, every time I went out and did it, and I can remember the first guy that I trained, uh, tractor trader unit and Rigel and Rigel had, he had a big party after he got his license and passed his tractor trader license. Uh, and you know, it was awesome that he took the time and he actually did that, got his license, you know, and I met him years ago, years later. And, uh, you know, he'd stopped driving truck. He wasn't driving truck. He went on and did something else that he wanted to do, but Take the time, celebrate your little wins because you, you, you're you gonna have so many of them in your life and it's so important to be able to do those and take the time and bring other people into your celebrations. Bring your family and bring your, bring your friends and those types of things and make sure that you really celebrate uh, those wins because the first time you get your driver's license, it's so awesome. It's just the freedom is incredible, okay? Uh, congrats. Excellent. It's always best to assume that trucks don't see you. Yes. And that is a good, good thing to assume Gordon for sure. Uh, Mr. Smiley, have you parked a big Mac truck before? <laughs> I actually have packed, parked a big Mac truck. Uh, the, the driving school that I worked on for Vancouver Island, they actually had a Mac that was an automatic transmission. I did not like the automatic transmission at all, but it was the early renditions of the automatic transmissions. Uh, Epic, uh, really good tips here for older freeway designs. You need to have a good situational awareness on entering and exiting them because they have short acceleration, deceleration lanes. Uh, wrong move and you're going to crash. Yes, and the other thing about that Epic, uh, those older uh, on-ramps and off-ramps, the ones that are one and the same, <laughs> this is the on-ramp and this is the off-ramp and they're joined, they're one and the same. They're getting rid of them now because they realize that they're quite dangerous. But you have to have some super situational awareness on those things for sure. There's uh, still one up in Kamloops here. And actually, I'm going to take a drive up here one day. And I'm going to do a video on it just to show you how to do that. Okay. Uh, Margaret, I'm taking my dog on a road trip to celebrate when I get my license. That's awesome, Margaret. Yes. And, you know, even if, like Margaret says, you know, take the dog down to the lake. Go for a drive, you know. Put some CCR on the radio and have some good, great tunes. The windows open, the wind blowing in your hair. Not so much my hair because I don't really have any anymore, but you know, your hair. I'm sure all of you have hair. So, you know, that's the other thing you can do is just, just have a great time. And, you know, I mean, I love driving and, you know, the, I took the trip down to Vancouver Island, you know, all day Saturday, all day Sunday coming back. And, uh, you know, <laughs> 
I listened to Arnold Schwarzenegger's autobiography. It was, you know, it was, it was good. It was entertaining. And, uh, you know, it was, it took most of the trip. It took, I listened to the whole book, uh, the whole audio book while I was going down and coming back. And, you know, there's places you get into town and, you know, you roll the windows down and the wind's blowing through the car and you're just driving and listen to the music on the radio or the audio book or whatnot. It's just, it's, it's liberating. It's great. It's awesome. Uh, uh, Gordon, I celebrated by going to the seafood restaurant in Oakville. Uh, contemplated my sec success over some lobsters. See, that's just awesome. Thank you. I will definitely go and get some ice cream. Absolutely, Jasmine. That's the, the thing to do. You know, and take your friend with you because then you can celebrate your success with somebody else. Uh, Gordon, am I familiar with Lincoln pickup trucks? Uh, I am a little bit Gordon. I did have one of my smart drivers, one of my one of my students actually, when I was te still teaching at the truck driving school. Uh, he had a Lincoln pickup truck, you know, and they're kind of it in a bit. They're kind of the, the luxury pickup truck of Ford is what really what they are. So yeah, I don't know if you have any questions about Lincoln pickup trucks, but uh, let's see if I could get a hold of one for you. Maybe do a, a video for you. Uh, Roberta, you've got your road test on Wednesday. Awesome. So that's really great. So uh, good luck on your driver's test on Wednesday. And that's awesome. And Margaret, yes, some credence. You definitely want to have some credence on the radio. That's one of the good ones. Uh, you know, you just want some good good road tunes when you're doing your celebration there of passing your driver's test. Uh, so that's really awesome. So this face of mine is gratitude because my back is finally better. I'm able to start working out again, which is really great. Uh, a little tired today from the big drive on the weekend going down to the island and whatnot. So yes so really awesome so i think we're going to wrap it up there for tonight uh if you have any questions at all if you're watching on the replay leave me a comment down in the comment section i try to get to those as best i can every now and again and as i said we're working on uh putting up a subscription over at the smart drive test website and then once you subscribe uh pay a small fee uh then i can guarantee that i'm going to be able to answer your questions over at the smart drive test website the, the, the youtube thing is just getting too big unfortunately the i don't know what they've done with the comments here but they're they're clunky they're like square wheels on a car and i just am having a lot of trouble trying to get back to people and answering people's questions here on this so i'm going to take it over to the smart drive test website and and do it that way gordon uh arnold schwarzenegger became another legislator who has no relation to the trucking industry no he doesn't uh, I've never driven a pickup truck before, but a Lincoln pickup truck would be a darn good incentive. Yes, it would. Uh, Epic. Uh, Lincoln pickup trucks are exactly identical to their Ford models because Lincoln cars are the luxury brand for Ford motors, even down to the point that they use the same components of Ford. Yeah, and that's not surprising at all, Epic, uh, that they're you know pretty much the same as the pickup trucks, but some people like them, and you know they are the luxury edition. It's kind of like Honda and Akira, you know, Akira is the, the, the luxury edition of Honda. So, you know, they're a lot of the same part, uh, components and those types of things. Uh, Bot, any tips on how to have a positive mindset and reduce anxiety during the test? Yes, definitely, Bot. Make sure you breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. Focus on your breathing. That will force your body to relax. And as well, make sure you show up, you know, 15 to 20 minutes early, get yourself checked in, go for a little walk, don't go too far away. And, you know, visualize the win, visualize the instructor saying, you passed, congratulations, okay? So do that. Uh, Gray, what does a G2 road test is it like now due to COVID? Uh, Gray, it's essentially the same there in Ontario. It's uh, just a shortened driver's test in Ontario. They haven't modified it, it's not a closed circuit test. It's just a shortened driver's test there in Ontario for the G2 uh, road test. All right, so we're going to leave it there. Thank you, everybody, for your questions. Thank you for participating. Again, if you're watching on the replay, uh, you're watching now, hit that thumbs up button before you leave. Uh, if you have any questions, leave me a comment down in the comment section, and we'll do our best to answer those. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.